did you guys watch the HBO documentary, does it matter who Satoshi is, and did they answer the question? So I didn't watch the documentary. Uh, I saw people were saying that the documentary said it was Peter Todd. So obviously he trolled them into doing that, which <laughs> I thought was pretty funny. It's 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 on par with kind of just uh, what goes on in Bitcoin. In particular, the the forum post that they pointed to on Bitcoin Talk was Peter Todd uh, being uh, contrarian or uh, pedantic and, and correcting Satoshi, and they thought that was an indication of oh well, Peter Todd must be Satoshi. He accidentally posted under the wrong pseudonym, but uh, you know he. Peter Todd was being Peter Todd. I don't know why uh, people are reading so much into that. I think it's a great mystery. I think that it, it brings adoption that uh, we don't know who it is. And if it is Peter Todd, I mean, I, I give up. I'm not doing Bitcoin anymore. <laughs> I think you're both well placed uh, from different perspectives to talk about the US elections and the potential it'll have on Bitcoin in particular. Pierre, maybe you can chat about the mining uh, perspective and what it might mean for the Bitcoin mining industry. if. Trump were to win the elections. And then Dylan, maybe you can just chat about the macroeconomic kind of perspective and, and, and what happens to Bitcoin if Trump wins or if Harris wins. Pierre, you go first. Yeah, so uh, the Biden administration, which, you know, Kamala in interviews, she said that she stands behind everything that Joe Biden has ever done and she would not do anything differently. So we'll take her her word on that. And what, what Biden has done and thus Kamala has done uh, is attack the Bitcoin mining industry at every opportunity that they get. And so I think that uh, with them out of the White House and with uh, Trump administration, that uh, the Bitcoin mining industry would not be getting attacked anymore. And we're not asking for any special favors or anything. Uh, we're running great businesses. Uh, we're employing lots of people, creating jobs. And, uh, you know, that's what American uh, the, the free market economics is all about. And so um, on top of that, of course, we're helping balance the energy grid and all of these benefits. So. Uh, what, what we would expect out of a Trump administration would be start thinking about, okay, how do we build up a strategic stockpile of Bitcoin? How do we get people using Bitcoin, using lightning payments so that we can move away from the Visa and MasterCard monopolies? I think a, a Trump administration would be great for Bitcoin. Um, I think also, you know, interestingly, kind of tang tangential to that is the fact that, you know, that with the Trump administration, particularly J.D. Vance, kind of echoing some of the problems that you know a lot of it's, it's more niche kind of macro insights on the fact that the dollar has like hollowed out the u.s manufacturing base um, and this is like a, a, a big geo geostrategic importance as we're kind of enter this multipolar world so you know the idea of okay let's let's increase tariffs uh, instead of levy taxes on the u.s consumer and corporations increase tariffs reshore manufacturing and you know bitcoin will kind of serve as this liquidity sponge, if you will, as we're running deficits, as we're weakening the dollar. Um, I think that's, you know, that's an extremely bullish and, and also um, very savvy political or, you know, kind of a, a, a policy framework that they have built out. So uh, I'm excited about the prospect of it. We'll see how the election goes, but um, it'll, I think it'll be a fun, tw fun 12 months ahead. Just from the perspective of uh, institutional investment, obviously this year has been massive with Bitcoin ETFs being launched. I found it really interesting that people were sharing BlackRock's pitch deck for their Bitcoin ETFs recently. And like one of the main advertising, advertising points there is the, the, the weakening spending power of the dollar since 1927, 1927 and where it sits now and them telling institutional investors that you need to understand that the dollar is just constantly being weakened because of the way that our economy runs. And here is an asset class that can save everyone from this. Um, do you expect hyper Bitcoinization in the next two to three years? <laughs> well, with Larry Fink going on TV and saying that Bitcoin is above governments, uh, it does feel like hyper Bitcoinization has already arrived. Uh, we're we're there, uh, and then it's just a matter of getting the word out. So that's uh, you know the great part about Coin Telegraph and this conference. Um, I, I think though that this this does this is a pivotal shift uh, to have some uh, you know a, a firm that large, trillions of dollars, uh, and then a leader like Larry Fink. Uh, speaking positively about Bitcoin and earnestly too. I, mean, I don't get the impression that he's just trying to sell a product. I get the impression that he's actually orange pilled and uh, you know he's uh, he's on board with it. Yeah, I mean it's it's quite it's quite something to behold when you know the BlackRock pitch decks and you know some of the you know the CEO going on CNBC echoes the you know the talking points of of anonymous Bitcoin maximalists for the last decade. I mean, read what this guy wrote on you know 
on the talk forums and his, his own blog in 2014, right? And, and now that's being echoed by, you know, uh, industry uh, titans of finance, right? So I, I think it's uh, it's definitely an exciting time. Um, it's still remarkably early uh, somehow. Yeah, I mean, for how early we are, I still think that from a, a global wealth balance sheet perspective, Bitcoin adoption is still less than 1%. And so while people look at the historical price action of Bitcoin and they think, oh, all the gains are in the past, you know, now it's a boring uh, asset. I think that that's a very misleading narrative and that they're going to be caught surprised. We watched like with keen interest uh, Bitcoin 2024 in Nashville. Um, I couldn't help but think that a lot of politicians were the, there just pandering to this uh, audience in particular. Did you feel like it was slightly captured or did you think that it was kind of a seminal moment to really just have really big politicians being there and actually finally agreeing with everyone that, that Bitcoin isn't important? I think that uh, it makes sense for politicians to want to understand it at the very least, uh, if not to differentiate their political campaigns from their opponents. Uh, when your opponent is basically promising centralized uh, digital bank currencies uh, or, or central bank digital currencies, uh, whatever they're called, whatever they're called uh, CBDCs, uh, that that offers an opportunity to attract voters because nobody wants these CBDCs. Uh, what they want is sound money, and so I think that Trump was very smart to catch on to uh, the fact that there's lots of votes to be gained here, and it's frankly shocking how myopic the uh, Democratic elite class has been with regards to Bitcoin. Uh, they definitely need to be pushing back on Elizabeth Warren, uh, distancing themselves from her, kicking her out of the party if she doesn't, you know, learn to love Bitcoin. It's interesting, some of the criticism of, you know, whether it's Trump or the politicians at, at Nashville or, you know, just the, the recent like GOP position on, on Bitcoin is that they're just pandering for votes or they're just pandering for, uh, you know, lobbying dollars. And it's, it's you know, like newsflash, uh, that's what politicians do. Uh, so we're now a significant voting block. Uh, I think Bitcoin crypto industry broadly has a disproportionate amount of capital. Um, and so, you know, this was unimaginable four years ago. And it's not going anywhere. Um, and and you know the next next uh, election cycle will you know have even you know there will be more capital and, and we'll have more muscles to flex. So I think that's you know it's a clear it's a clear pivot inflection point if you will. And um, you know I think by 2028 it'll be bipartisan consensus that Bitcoin's going nowhere. We need to embrace this. And never mind all of the you know the geopolitical game theory that that stems from you know just even the rhetoric or or Tr you know, Trump uh, truth social posts, right? Um, there's, there's a lot of second and third order effects here. So exciting times. Yeah, I think the, the biggest second or third order effect is how many people actually listen to Trump. And when he says that Bitcoin is good, then they actually go do some research. Uh, they might have heard about Bitcoin before. They heard about it from their kids or their nieces and nephews. And now they have that social validation from the top. Uh, and I think that's going to accelerate Bitcoin adoption.